Welcome to our online service here to here this morning. We're glad you chose to worship with us. And at this time, we're going to just uh, worship our Heavenly Father uh, through song here. So join in with us if you would. And those that are, uh, that are uh, listening to us on the FM station, please uh, just uh, hopefully you've got some words. And if you want to sing along, please do so uh, here. We'll hear you here from the inside of the sanctuary here. Let's, let's have our music if we may. Bye. 
He's Lord and Messiah. He's Lord of all. He's our, he's our Lord and Savior. Just a couple things here before we begin. I hope that you've got a scripture sheet there also. Uh, if you didn't, uh, if you'll raise your hand, uh, uh, some of them will bring one to you uh, here. Right here, we need a scripture sheet right over here. Roger Rhonda needs one. Anyone, uh, right here, Barbara also needs one here also that goes along with your bulletin there. Uh, please note that, if you would, please, here. And uh, look at the 9 o'clock one on there. Just a couple things here. We have our offering baskets here that are on uh, my right and left and back in the vestibule. Beside of it, you'll see with a label on it, this is for our soup kitchen here in Union County. Uh, uh, there, uh, that 100% uh, of that go will go to that. So if you feel so lit, please donate there. I know they need it because there's more of a hunger crisis now than what we've ever seen. Uh, in recent years there. So thank you for your support of, the, of that and for the group that is continuous, has continuously ministered there at the homeless shelter throughout all the things that we've been have, uh, had going on here also. here uh, And also just to let everyone know, those that are listening at home, Sunday school is up and going all the way from nursery all the way up. We, are, we will be having children's church during the 1045 service there. Uh, that is all, that's an up and going, so we're beginning to get things, uh, everything back up, and we and would invite you to come be a part as you feel uh, comfortable doing so, uh, but we look forward to seeing each of you, uh, but we're glad that you're with us online as, as, as well as in the parking lot and those that are here present here with us. Now, I'm going to be uh, reading here a verse that's not on your scripture sheet. Don't you know a Baptist preacher loves to do that? Uh, this is one, though, you know. Uh, out of 1 Chronicles, the 7th chapter, and uh, you know that word, and the uh, title of the message today here, uh, Revive My Spirit. I think if you ever needed your spirit revived, I was talking to someone this week, and, and they were telling me, said the, uh, I asked, I said, well, the wall's coming in on you, and I uh, said, they're well past that. Uh, uh, for those of you that maybe you've been confined or, uh, or you've had to quarantine, you know how well uh, that and how difficult that is, particularly when you're active. And uh, this particular person was used to being very much in a lot of activity and uh, now to be confined. So uh, I think it's much beyond that now. Uh, revive my spirit, God. Uh, stir my heart. Cause me, Lord, to get closer and closer to you. Bring me into your presence in such a mighty way that, Father, that you certainly indeed are being proclaimed with every thought that I think, with every uh, word that I speak, with every step that I, that I go forward. Now, I want you to think about uh, what's going on. And uh, here is the Old Testament writer, and the Lord uh, is speaking to our people. And I think this has been... This scripture, and particularly we use this uh, on, na on National Day of Prayer in May, uh, but I think it's so pertinent for us uh, even today. And I want us to begin this service with this God's Word. And I'm reading out of King James, and I, your scripture sheet's in King James too. Whatever translation's fine. 
But uh, first, uh, Second Chronicles, the seventh chapter, verse uh, fourteen. Listen to these words: If my people, that's you and I, you and I are, are God's people. If you know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, if if you and I would, uh, if we'll turn to God. Now, listen to what He says: Which are called by My name. We're a Christian called by the name of Christ. So far, so good. We're each one of us. As, a, as God's word is telling us, we're his people. We're called by his name. Now listen to, listen to the next phrase here in this verse. If you and I shall humble themselves. Humble ourselves. Don't come to, before God with an arrogant spirit. With an arrogant way. One in which that we think that hey, we've got better ideal than what God has. Humble yourselves and come before God. This is what our Heavenly Father constantly, and Jesus Christ would constantly tell us, is so important, folks, that we come before our, our Lord with that spirit of humbleness. Jesus Christ would, would show us before He would give His life on Calvary. You may remember that uh, uh, here as Jesus, uh, there He was getting ready to celebrate the last, what we call the Last Supper. One of the things that uh, and was a nice thing for any uh, a visitor that would come into someone's home, that they would have a basin of water and a pitcher of fresh water also, and a towel that would be girded about. And, and Jesus Christ would teach his disciples a very humbling lesson of, how, of what he was willing to do. And he told them and was trying to teach and to show them they must be willing to do whatever it takes to carry forth the gospel that he had presented to them and that the Holy Spirit was going to lead them in the coming days, and as they would kneel down, and Jesus Christ himself would kneel down, and he would wash those dusty, dirty feet, and he would dry them off. See, humility. See, Jesus didn't come just to show us all his power, but he came to show us how much he loves us. He came to show us that that I'm there for you the, you know, for the long haul. Or in other words, for all of our lifetimes. One of the things I think uh, 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 here in just a matter of hours will be laying to rest one of, one of God's children. It's Polly Marsh. Uh, I think one of the first things I'm going to say here is, Well done, well done, well done, thou good and faithful servant. So, here, as God's word is being spoken and God is speaking directly to your heart and my heart and throughout generation after generation, and he says, if you and I will humble ourselves. But look at the next statement. He says, you and I need to pray. I think there's, there ought to be a whole lot more praying than what we do. I hope and pray that this has caused us or stirred our hearts together corporately as the church. And the church is much bigger than, than the walls here that we have and the buildings that we have. The, the church is much greater. The church is where God's people are and that we're seeking to be drawn closer and closer to Him. And listen to the next phrase here as he continues on. And, and God is saying, I want you not only to humble yourselves, but once you humble yourself and once you ha ha are continually praying in your life the way and manner in which that God has prescribed for us, then and only then are we truly going to become a true seeker of what God is offering to every man, woman, and child. He's offering His Holy Spirit, the power and the presence of God in your life and in my life. Revive my spirit, God. Revive who I am. Revive that I am your child. And that I truly indeed, I want to become everything, Lord, you want me to become. And I want to truly be a seeker. A seeker of that which you have called me to be and to do. So he says, and seek my face. That means I'm actively in pursuit of everything that God is seeking to do in my life. And, and that each of us, that God is seeking to do in each one of our lives. And rest assured, folks, God's not just working in one of our lives. He's working in every person's life. That's the presence of God. And, and for that alone, folks, we ought to come into God's house 
week after week, service after service, and we ought to praise Him. We ought to lift our hearts to Him. We ought to open our hearts and souls to Him. Listen now as we continue on just a little bit further here. And turn from our wicked ways. You say, preacher, that really doesn't apply to me. Have you ever sinned? Then yes, my, yes, my friend, it applies to every one of us. For we all have sinned. And throughout the, the Bible, throughout not only the Old Testament, New Testament also, we are reminded of our sin and that we all sin. And so the scripture, as God says to us, that we've got to turn from our old ways. Turn from that which is of our past. And folks, we all have a past. We all have things in which that we really wish we could turn back and we could do differently. But the one thing that we can't do, we can't turn that dial of time back. But the one thing I can do, I can control what I'm doing from this point forward. And that's what God's saying, that every man, woman, and child, that we, if truly our spirits are going to be revived, or they're going to be stirred, we're going to have to turn from the ways that we were and the ways of the past. And we're going to have to seek God's face. And then, listen to what the last part here of this verse, and we'll move on to some others. Then will I hear from heaven. And only then. We've got to put ourselves in the position to where God can hear us and God is listening to us and how God will respond. And certainly indeed God does know our hearts and lives, but God has given us the way and the prescription in which that you, if we will accomplish those things, God's promise is that you, that I will hear you and I will be, a, be with you. But listen, not only will you and I hear from heaven when we do it God's way, he says, but I will forgive your sins. Folks, nobody else. Nobody else can forgive us of our sins. Nobody else can give us a clean slate. Nobody else can give us a fresh start. Nobody else can give us a new beginning. But God himself. Because if we do it God's way and we seek out his forgiveness and we seek his face and we pray and we turn from those ways of the past, God said, I, you will hear from heaven, and I will forgive your sins, and I will give you there. And notice the last thing, and I think every one of us as Americans, but also as Christians, I think one of, part of, one of our prayers and part of our prayer life has been, God, please heal America. Heal this great land of ours that our forefathers loved and cared so much for and that we have cared so much for. Heal our, our division. Heal those things, the wrongdoings, the ways in which that many times that we are turning away from where God, God's Word tells us something that is so much contradicts the ways and where we're at. There's been three great awakenings. Let me very quickly here, I know our time's going to get away. Uh, one was, was held during the, first, uh, during the 1700s, led by Jonathan Edwards, George Whit Whitfield. During just two years of revival from 1740 to 1742, some 25,000 to 50,000 people were added to the New England churches. And, uh, and this was out of a population of 300,000. Think about it. Up to 50,000 out of 300,000 were saved. They had a new lease on life because they had given their heart and life to Jesus Christ. This was the first awakening in America. Second one took place from 1790 to 1840. That's quite a revival. Stirring our hearts, led by, uh, that included a man named Charles Finley. It was a time in which the Wild West was going on. Law was disregarded, and there was a lot of other things that were so ungodly. And at the last, the camp meetings had crowds of 15,000. Now, some of you don't realize what a camp meeting is. We have uh, one denomination in our, uh, 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 in our southern part of our counties. They still yet this day will have a camp meeting. People will come and they have little cabins. Uh, some have electricity, others don't. Uh, and they'll meet for a solid week. Why did this happen? Because they felt a need that we would stay close to our Heavenly Father and that our spirits might be renewed. And I think that's pro pretty good uh, ideology and thinking and reasoning and logic that they're giving uh, here. So they were up to 15,000 would gather for several days throughout our country. An incredible figure, a part of the 
uh, population came. Thousands came to know, to, uh, to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. It's told that more than 10,000 in the state of Kentucky alone, uh, between 1800 and 1803, received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We're told that even Abraham Lincoln, he attended some of these camp meetings. And why did they attend? Because they wanted to hear the power and the presence of the Lord. Third of Great Awakening was and that from 1857 to 1859. This revival began very unique. There was a 48-year-old businessman called Jer uh, Jeremiah Lamphere. He began a prayer meeting on Fulton Street in New York City. And it began slowly, but soon it exploded. The stock market crashed. Prayer meetings spread quickly. Where else do you turn when you lose everything? You turn to the Lord. I pray that that does not have to happen in America today, in 2021, that we will heed the call of God and heed His Word and His message. We're told that, that uh, prayer meetings were filling up theaters, and yes, even on Broadway, the theaters were being filled. Within six months, we're told that over 10,000 people were gathering every day for prayer in the city of New York City. It's reported that 50,000 New Yorkers were converted between the months of March to May. Folks, that's a short period of time. But to see that many people come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And there were 10,000 additions to the church membership weekly. People knew and they decided back then, I need to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is my hope. He is the only hope. You have your scripture sheet there, or you can turn in your Bible if you'd like to. Let me very quickly go through several of these very quickly here. In Psalms 85, 6, David writes these words. Wilt thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Folks, whenever the stock market crashed, and people began to lose heart, and they began to turn away from God, certainly indeed, where do you turn? What do you do? I'm grateful, and if, the, and if the world's ever going to see where you turn, it's going to have to be you and I as Christians. I know that most that are listening to us this morning, you are, you are a child of God, and I thank the Lord for that. But the world needs to see us as an example. Not that you and I are better than them, but that we're all sinners. We're all in this world together. We're all seeking the same thing of turning back to God so that God can revive our spirits so that our people that we might rejoice. And look at the last phrase there, that I'm going to rejoice in the, in the Lord. I'm going to rejoice in you, Lord. Look at Habakkuk 3, 2. You don't hear that. We played a little video some time ago. Billy Graham uh, uh, was preaching out of the book of Habakkuk. Oh, Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. God's word, you, when you read and study it, folks, it'll convict you. It'll show you and I exactly who we are, even though sometimes I think we're not so certain about that. And listen, listen, the writer says, O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In other words, God, all the things that are happening in my life, God, I want you to stir my heart and change me. I want you to look at who I am, and God, I want to see changes made in my life. That's what God's waiting on for America to do, to, to reach that point that we have that we're going to be willing to turn to God. And we're going to be willing if, to fall on our knees and say, God, revive my soul. Revive my spirit. And, and the writer here continues on and he says, revive those things that, that have happened in and about my life all those many years. And in the midst of the years, make known. But Lord also, Lord in your wrath, please apply your mercy. Please apply the mercy of, the, of you, God, upon my life. The book of Romans, let me get in the New Testament here for a little bit here, if I may. Romans 11, the 13th chapter, verse 11 and 12. Listen to these words. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Folks, I know what time it is here. I got, I got a clock to tell me. You know what, you know what here is we're seeing the writer here? to the early church, the early believers, is saying to us, and knowing the time, it is high time. It is the time above all times that now I need to awake. 
I have let my life go. I've let things happen in my life that I shouldn't. I know there are times in which that I should have been on board with you. I should have been in your house. I should have been praying. I should have been praising you. I should have been rejoicing. Those are the times that I should have been doing what I know, God, that you require to bring about in my life. God, I know that that's what I should do. So it's a time, it's high time. It's not just time for me to awake. It's high time to awake now from my sleep. Because now is our salvation nearer than we, than when we believed. Now listen to verse 12 as, it, as we continue reading. The night is far spent. The day's at hand. We don't need to look in the future and say, I need revival when this stuff gets over. No, the church needs revival right now. On this day, February the 7th, 2021, the church, now listen to me folks that are online, out in the parking lot and here today, we, if ever we need a revival, it's not in the future that we need revival. It is right now that it's high time that you and I'd wake up and it's high time that you and I'd get on with the work of the Lord and get on with what God has called us to do. And he goes on and says, let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. If you and I are going to see revival in our life, we can't bring that garbage with us. We can't bring sin with us. To a revival and sin just not going to mix. Revival is, is when you and I are going to be honest enough with ourselves and we're going to lay aside that sin and we're going to say, Jesus Christ, I, I ask you to remove that. I ask you, Father, to take care of it. And Jesus Christ to do that very thing. So we're not going to bring, if our hearts are going to be revived and stirred, we're not going to be able to take that old garbage and baggage with us because we've got to leave it behind and let Jesus take care of it. And listen to the last phrase here in verse 12. It says, let us put on the armor. And listen to what he said. He didn't say the armor of God, even though that's what it's applying. The armor of light. The light of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ told us as he walked upon this earth, I'm the light of the world. I'm what the world needs. Because when the world's in darkness, the world needs to see, see what's going on. The world needs to see. And the only way you and I are really going to see the way God intended was, is that when you and I are going to get to the place that I'm going to put on my armor of light and I'm going to let the light of Jesus Christ shine forth. And, it, and, and it's the light of Jesus is shining forth, folks. We're going to see the world begin. Where does revival start? It doesn't start out in the world. It starts with individuals, with people that are called of God, children of the Lord. Whenever we see there's a need and we resolve that from this point forward, I'm going to seek, be a seeker of the Lord, and I'm going to seek to do that which God's called us to do. Look with me at 1 John very quickly, the second chapter, verse 19. They went out from us, but they were not, a, not of us. There are a lot of people that go out in the name of Jesus. But literally, many, they only have Jesus to a point. That is so sad. We were talking a little while ago that a lot of times, people, we only have the emotion of Christ. Emotion will never get you in heaven's gate. You've got to know Christ. It's got to be something deeper. It's got to be more of a commitment than simply emotion. Because you know what emotion will do? Emotion will, be, will come and go. It'll, it'll be gone. It'll come upon you. It'll make you feel good. It'll make, you, it'll make things seem as though everything's great. But then you go out a little bit further and you get a little bit away from it. What happens with that emotion? It begins to lose us. We begin to lose it and we falter and we get weaker and weaker. Look at the next phrase here in verse 19. They would no doubt have combined, continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest. And look what it says, that they might be seen. We have a lot of self-seekers in this world today. You don't believe that? Look online. Look at some of our politicians. You know, a lot of the things, they retell it, and sometimes they tell it what we think is right, and sometimes they tell it when it's, it's an out-and-out -out lie. It's an untruth. It's not something that is right. And how sad it is that whenever we get people that they want to get in front of a camera and they want a little more attention. You see, that? see that's that self-centeredness. We got to if anybody's going to be in the center of your life and my life, it's got to be Jesus Christ. Nobody else, no one else will do. If our spirits and our land is ever going to be revived, Jesus Christ has got to be at the center of our life, nowhere else. 
Look at Psalms 119, 17, where David says, Lord, deal bountifully with thy servant. And David, he could say right along with Saul of Tarsus, which later was Paul, I am the chiefest of sinners. But David said, deal bountifully with thy servant. And look, look what David said, that I may live, and that, Lord, that I can keep your word. How about it, folks? Are you willing to let Jesus Christ stir your heart here this morning? you got to do it. I've got an amen coming over here. I'm happy to hear that here. <laughs> and uh, here we are. We're thinking about, what are you going to do with Jesus? Will you let Jesus Christ revive your spirit? Revival starts. I can't point out there. I can't point somewhere else. Only place I can point is right to me. i got to point and say, if revival is going to start in my midst, and going to start around me, it starts with Leon. And it starts with you. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to let the God direct you pass? I challenge you here this day. Rededicate or recommit your life or give your life to Jesus Christ. For there is no other way that you and I are ever going to enter heaven's gates except by Jesus Christ. For he gives us and is seeking to give every one of us that armor of light. Will you receive it? That's the question. Stand with me as we sing a hymn of invitation. I hope that you'll just recommit or rededicate your life here this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. I hope and pray that each of us, as we've sang that beautiful hymn, I surrender all. I hope that's exactly what each of you are doing here this morning, surrendering it all to Jesus Christ. Pray with me if you would, please. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you, Father, that you are willing to revive this nation. But, Father, you are willing to revive my spirit and my heart and my soul and every person that is here today, whether they're here in this building or out in the parking lot or at home. Lord, you are more than willing to do it, but we've got to do it your way. And I just pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit and your power and presence, it may stir our hearts to such a degree that, Lord, that you're going to be able to use us to cause a revival, a new awakening here in the Marshall Winged area and here in Union County, and that we will come together as churches that seeking, Lord, truly indeed to be revived, that we're going to start anew and afresh with newness, that, Lord, that only you can bring to us. So, Father, this day, we say thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing in every life. So, Lord, keep us safe, hear our prayers, take care of everyone, and bring us back at the next appointed time here in this, your house. For we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. May God bless you. Have a wonderful week. See you next week.